hands to put your hands together or to give the Zoom applause to Martin and Michelle for taking the time today to guide us through Deck Hive. So without further distraction, up to you. Thank you. Thank you. It's really nice to be here. Thank you for the mm -hmm. invite. And it's nice to see everyone. Um, so we're going to just share a few slides just really quickly and um, just to talk you through our story and, and how we got to where we are now. And then we'll uh, soon after that, then just dive in and have a play and let you um, experience what we can do with Deck Hive and maybe share some ideas about how you think we could be using it more and different things we could be doing with it, different ideas you have. Um, so if I just try and share my screen first of all. There we go. Has that worked? That has. That's good. I'm on a new computer. I'm just, I've just switched over to a Mac in the last week. And so it's all different. And so, um, welcome to the club. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's been many years. Michelle's been wanting to do it for years, but, um, I I've broken with the tradition first, but it's, um, yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's just kind of give you a bit of a background. I mean, first of all, to, um, to us so michelle and i are both business psychologists we're based out of the uk uh, we have a consultancy called work positive and most of our work is focused around helping people to be at their best in their work um, and to bring the best out of the people that they're managing so we do uh, a number of workshops around things like strengths well-being um, how to, to manage people effectively um, uh, and increasingly a focus on on uh, work-life balance and those kind of things as well so that's kind of our day job and as part of that uh, that work we a number of years ago created uh, a couple of decks of cards uh, i have a deck here uh, so we have the at my best strengths cards and these are really simple uh, set of cards we've got um single word strengths on one side you can see those so they're really simple um but they're, and there's no right answers. They're just really designed to help people understand uh, themselves and others better and by providing a, a stimulus, which in some cases is those single words. In other cases, it's the photographs on the other side and using the, the metaphor of the, the image. Um, so you'll experience more of those in digital form in a moment, but that's kind of what we did a few years ago. And we've had lots of um, joy with those. We have looked some great feedback from people who use the cards because we, we um, sell them around the world now to coaches and facilitators, managers, um, counselors, therapists, all sorts of different people use them in lots of different ways, which is really lovely. And, um, and we use them in our own workshops very often and, and they work really well, as many of you may have experienced using decks of cards in various different forms. Um, they can really help to open up the conversation in in a very natural way they they're quite playful um people love the imagery and the, the opportunity to kind of tell their stories in many different ways and whether they're working individually or as pairs or small groups or even as a plenary group or all stood around a table and um, we've often found that they're a really effective way of, um, of engaging people and thinking about questions in a slightly different way and i think sometimes it takes away the um the the, the formality of, of asking people to to sort of diagnose themselves or to even think about other, other people. It, it, it gives a very light touch way into those kind of conversations. It, it, it's really good. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the strengths cards, so you can see a few more of them on the screen there. Um, we also have another deck of cards we created about maybe a year and a half, two years ago now, was it, do you think? Mm -hmm. At least, yeah, maybe a bit longer. Yeah, do you want to say a bit about those? Yeah, so the um, the good question cards, which we'll show you in Deck Hive uh, shortly, um, a bit before we show you the strengths cards as well. Uh, we created the good question cards as a series of questions, basically, that are largely appreciative in nature, but are all focused on helping people to build on what's working, focus on uh, what they appreciate, gratitude, those kinds of themes, uh, because we recognise that the questions you ask often dictate where you get to and certainly change your focus. So by asking more appreciative questions, something we talk about a lot in our mm -hmm. consultancy work, uh, then we can get people to a different place rather than focusing on the problem solving all the time. So they're quite different, um, but uh, equally we've had 
lots of feedback from others and through our own experience of using them that simply having the questions on a card is oddly different to asking the question outright. Uh, it makes it more playful, makes it able, people seem better able to engage in them or engage in them in a different kind of way. I, I think in part because usually the way we use them is to ask people to choose the cards for themselves. So choose the, their own question that they want to answer. So again, you've got that degree of um, autonomy and choice about it. And as a consequence, people seem to engage in a different way to if they're being asked by a coach or facilitator, uh, the, the question from the outset. Uh, so they, uh, you can see there's a continuation in theme around positive psychology and building on what's working, but quite different in the way they work. I'm interested in how many of you here already use different decks of cards in your facilitation. So in, in, in the real world, um, or back in the day, if you can remember back, back that far. Yeah, so, and um, anyone want to just kind of just share kind of which which card decks you use or what you do with them? It'd be interesting just to kind of get a sense about the, the different ways that you've used them. Bastian, were you un unmuting? Yeah. So you had something you could share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't, you know, want to jump in. Those, thank you feel, for the invitation. Feel free to jump. Uh, we need someone. I've been, I've been using good old playing cards, uh, particularly with an exercise called Barnga where you put people on different uh, tables and they all learn to play a game, uh, but each one has slightly different rules. And then you play a tournament and you put people then to different tables, but they're not allowed to talk, they're just allowed to play. And then at some time, at some point, they find out that they have different rules and they need to figure out how to uh, continue then and it's really interesting around you know problem solving and conflict resolution and um, dominance and who gets to dictate the rules the, the, mm -hmm. the table where someone comes to or whoever comes to a table gets to dictate the rule and how does status in the room play into that so it opens a lot of really interesting um, conversations. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, and and you but you stop them talking until after they finish the, ex the exercise. Yes, at at the end of the exercise, we talk about what happened, and we talk about, uh, and then they can talk. Uh, but before, uh, they have to keep quiet because it's a very serious tournament, and you don't talk to them in serious <laughs> tournaments. Excellent, thank you. And Jenny, so you're saying you've used some photos, but not cards. So I guess similar concept then to to what we been doing with our strengths cards at least sometimes uh miriam dixit cards yeah i think we've we've maybe talked about those before haven't we um so i'm a uh, big fan of dixit cards and i usually use them for different reasons than the game usually hmm. um design them for yes yeah, so how do you use them what's uh what's your favorite kind of approach I think one of my favorites is to ask in the beginning um, to choose one card um, to show how the participants are feeling right now about a certain question or the challenge or the topic of the workshop and how they would like to feel afterwards. Mm. Um, because then you can also see where you, what do you see in the different pictures and very often we focus on something specific that the other participants don't even notice because mm. yeah, we see what yeah. we want to see and what touches us. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? You can choose the same picture for very different reasons. Um, and yeah, and we, we, we've uh, used cards, our own cards and others um, for that kind of check-in process as well. And and often do try to then get people to think forward about what they want to get out of a session. I think it's really important, isn't it? When someone joins a session having rushed from one thing to another or from one Zoom call to the next, that they then have an opportunity to just orientate to kind of why are they here and what are they trying to get out of this session and just taking that moment to pause. And actually a deck of cards can often be a really useful way of, of helping them to do that, along with the question about why is it important for you to be here today? And that's kind of a question we will often ask and we use the photos as the, the metaphor again to connect people with that purpose about why they why they might have signed up to join this course three months ago and now they've arrived not really quite remembering what it is that they're here for which might be some of you here today um so what are the other ones um any others there that we recognize story cubes there's lots of yeah, different types story of story cubes, cubes aren't they? Mm, and cards against new humanity so it's interesting to see how many of you are using games or something that was intended originally uh for play 
in play space, uh, using them in, in work related space. And then you can, can't you? So, so easily. I mean, story cubes, as Martin says, so many different versions of them can be used in so many different ways. Um, and we do often hear of people using lots of different cards or creating their own or just having their own set of images, uh, like you say, or, or objects. Uh, so the, the idea of simply having something that is um, uh, something more tangible uh, allows for more playful engagement, I suppose, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, and the Cards Against Humanity are an interesting one, aren't they? Because we've talked to a number of times about um, our dream of creating a a more positive version of Cards Against Humanity. Um, we haven't quite worked out what it would look like to kind of make it so much fun, um, while actually <laughs> also being really nice to people. Um, but uh, one day maybe we'll figure it out. But in the meantime, yeah, that's that's something for the late night sessions, isn't it? So, well, thank you for sharing. Um, and if if you think of any other decks of cards that you've come across before that you particularly like, then do do add them to the chat because I think it would be really useful for us to add to our list of uh, any recommended decks. Um, and then to continue our story, um, obviously you can imagine having, you know, a, a sort of preference for using decks of cards then suddenly around last March, April time when the world started changing, then um, we needed to think a little bit differently. And we had a lot of people from around the world getting in touch saying to us, you know, I use your cards all the time. They're a regular part of my toolkit. I take them everywhere with me. And now I'm working online. So do you have any tips? Can you help me to understand the best way I can use these cards now that we're working in this very different way? Uh, and some of them have been very creative about what they'd done about it. Some had uh, they'd taken photographs of the cards and they'd taken scans of the cards and they'd put them into PowerPoint slides. And uh, I think I saw one set of them in that form and they looked a bit of a mess. Uh, and they were useful to people, but they weren't really making the most of the possibilities of the technology. Um, uh, but equally, they were keen not to lose the potential to use the products uh, that they'd found really useful in the past. And um, it so happened that Michelle and I had talked for, well, maybe a couple of years even about the idea of putting the cards online um, and not quite got around to doing it in the form that uh, that we talked about. What we had done a few years ago was to create some structured activities online, which are based on the strengths cards. So we have two, we have a, a free self-reflection activity, which guides people through a process where they choose um, between four and eight words on the word side of the cards. They drag the cards around on the screen. They, they then do some reflective writing about why they've chosen those words and what that looks like. And they choose a photo or two that reflect who they are at their best in a visual metaphor kind of way. So we have that and we also have a 360 feedback tool, which is based on the same principles. So it works in the same way, but you can then invite 12 people up to 12 people to give you feedback on the strengths that they notice in you. So it's quite different to other 360 feedback tools in the sense that it's very visual and it's focused purely on strengths uh, and there are no ratings in it. So it uses a cards as a stimulus for that feedback, but it's a narrative feedback that people gather. But both of those things, as you can gather, I'm sure from the way I'm describing it, they're very structured processes. They, they don't have the freedom to use in the way that you would a deck of cards in a room as a facilitator. And what we talked about doing for a couple of years previously was this idea of just putting the cards on screen uh, and really just allowing people to kind of move them around, flip them over, do whatever they wanted to do with them. Um, but it had never got to the top of the list. And then obviously last year when all this hit then it seemed like well now's the time you know we, if we're ever going to do it then now is is the time to, to give it a try so over the course of about six weeks or so um we developed a prototype um and that was very basic um but it was a good way in and allowed people to do something very quickly um, and that's what that looked like you can see on the screen there uh, literally it was um like two decks of cards in one so the the word side were one set of cards, the photo side was another set because you couldn't flip them over. You could just literally move them from that space on the left over to the space on the right. And you could add some sticky notes to put some comments in or add some structure in, add some questions in. Uh, and it was managed through screen share. So um, uh, there was kind of not, not any sort of really fancy tech involved in it. Um, but we got some really good feedback from it. People found it really useful just to have that ability to, to move cards around and provide that visual stimulus. Uh, and so uh, we knew that there was some more in it. And of course, then once people start using something new, they start asking for all the things that it can't do yet that they wish it could do. And so um, so we then started building quite a long list of things that we 
wanted to do to improve the system. And then in conjunction with kind of doing all of that, we then had conversations with a number of people who had card decks of their own, uh, some, some of whom we knew and some who we didn't. Uh, and a number of them wanted to do something very similar. And in fact, some have gone on and done something very similar. They've, they've created similar systems on uh, using ours as the inspiration, which is very nice. Um, but we also could see that, well, a number of things were happening uh, or were risks in that kind of approach. One is that we were concerned that from a user point of view, as a facilitator or a coach, you, you often have many different decks of cards that you would draw upon. You wouldn't just use the one. So it's, it's nice when people tell us that they love ours and use them all the time and that they're their favorite deck of cards, but it's very rare that they're the only deck of cards. If people like using cards, they like to collect them and they have a whole library of them on their shelf very often. And so the idea that you'd have different systems for different decks of cards that you could need, you might want to use in different scenarios um, who probably all would work in slightly different ways and cost different amounts of money and different sort of costing models. Uh, we could just see that getting a bit messy uh, and that's that would be kind of a shame. And we also knew that a lot of the people that we know who created decks of cards, they've done it as a bit of a sideline to their main business as being a coach or a consultant. And so that's one thing to create a deck of cards that you can then get printed, you can stick in your spare bedroom and you can send out to people when they order. It's quite a different thing to create a digital product that you then need to service and keep available online that you need to provide customer support and user support um, to, the, to the people who are engaging with it. Um, and so we knew that there were many decks of cards where people might want to create a digital version, but actually they couldn't because it's not a cheap thing to do. Um, and they'd be put off the idea of doing it. And that's a shame then because people who love using it don't get to use it in a way that really suits the way that they're working now. So I think we had a moment where we were thinking we really don't want to start a new business and another new platform, didn't we? I think so. We'd got plenty. Yeah, we, <laughs> we like creating new things. So there's lots of different parts of our business. And, and we definitely thought, yeah, we don't need to do this. This is this is going too far. And then we realised, no, we really do need to do it um, because, well, partly because it would be fun uh, and partly because um, the, the world kind of needs it. So what we did was evolve uh, our prototype into... DeckHive, um, which is a much bigger kind of platform uh, than just our own card. So I'll let Michelle pick up the story from, from there and then I'll stop sharing my screen and she can show you what we've done. Yeah, okay. Um, so as Martin said, we saw this opportunity to have a lot more than just our decks of cards um, within a common system that people could then be using, get familiar with. Uh, so both um, facilitators would have one, one place to go, but it would also be one place for creative partners, which is uh, how we refer to those people who've created decks of cards, creative partners to put their cards on a platform um, as well that we could all jointly share and use each other's decks because to be honest there are lots of brilliant uh, decks of cards out there and I don't just want to be using ours um, there are lots of others I want, want to use too so I will share my screen now and show you where we've got to um, with Deck Hive. We will also get the chance to use them. You are yes yeah yeah so I'm going to show you very briefly and then we're going to get into some exercises and let you have a play. So hopefully you can see my screen now and you can see lots of different decks of cards. Um, so there are some up here that you can see as starter decks and they're ones that we've put on uh, the platform for people, basically they're available on the, the free plan. The, this is a su subscription uh, system. So on the free plan, you have access to all of the um, starter decks so you can do some useful things in there. And, and for example, um, Bastian, you can see that there are, there's a deck of playing cards there. And then you can see lots of other decks uh, that are um, professionally created, created by professional partners. And these are all decks that exist in the real world in physical uh, card form and have now been put onto the Deck Hive system. And what you can do is you can go into any deck and you can see information about that deck, uh, how to use it. You get some um, ideas for exercises and different ways of using uh, the, the decks, although obviously people often come up with their own ideas like we've already talked about with um, uh, various games and so on. Um, so we can tell you more about the system and how it works later if you're interested, but I think the best way uh, to show you is to let you have a play. So I've set up um, a session already here. 
uh, with our good question cards. And I'm just going to share my card, continue to share my screen for another minute or two, and then I'm going to turn it off um, because you will have your own version of Deck Hive. Uh, to be looking at. But you can see this, uh, my screen here is the host screen. So I have some extra features on here that you won't see when you get invited. Um, I've got the ability to invite people to the session. Uh, and when people are in the session, I'll see them in here. Um, and I also have the ability to lock the session. So to prevent anyone else from entering if I want to. Um, and uh, I have the ability to freeze the session. So uh, we find this really useful, particularly in large groups when we have lots of people doing lots of things and you just want them to stop and listen to what you're saying <laughs> and you can freeze the session so they can't keep playing. Uh, they have to, to stop and listen. Um, but otherwise this screen will look exactly like this uh, when you join the session. You'll be able to open up your deck and you'll be able to move the cards around and flip them over and so on. I'm going to let you play rather than me um, do anything else with that. But to invite you in, uh, all I need to do is just to copy this link here. I'm going to put that in the Zoom chat. Um, and then if you just click on that link, um, you will be able to get into the session. Um, now, if you can, I would open this in Chrome. It's a far smoother experience in Chrome. So if you can choose to use Chrome, that would be great. And obviously, if you can do it, looks like you're probably all on, on bigger devices. But if you can do it on a tablet or a PC, that's definitely better than a phone. Uh, you can imagine um, it's just a bit small uh, to, to work on a phone. So if you just click on that link, you can enter your name if you want to. Uh, you don't have to. I uh, just accept think, the terms and then you'll Could you put the link in the chat? Uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, I haven't been putting it to everybody. There you go. Um, there you go. You should uh, have that now. And what I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen in a minute because it just gets confusing. But if any of you can still see my screen, you will be able to see here that I can see all of you in the session now. Um, mm -hmm. So you you can see that I, as a facilitator, can then keep a sense of how many have joined me in the session. So I've got eight up here. Michelle, would you mind continue to share your screen because then we also have it in the recording, which might be interesting. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, yes, I will continue to do that. So uh, I can see people have got in and you're sort of moving things around. So if you just want to take a minute to do that, just open up your deck of cards on the left hand side um, and just move some things around. You will see you can flip them, you can enlarge them, you can delete them. And I can see someone's found the sticky notes as well. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course, Suzanne. So is everyone on the same board or do I have kind of my own questions or I'm, no. I'm not sure I understand how it works, to be honest, sorry. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. Um, yes, you all, so you're all looking at the same table. Um, so it's like you were in, if you imagine being in a physical space and you all have your own deck of cards. So that deck on your left-hand side, when you open it up, that's just yours. Nobody else is seeing you open and close that deck when you do that. Uh, but when you pull the cards over onto the table, it's like you're putting them on a physical table in front of you. So like you've got a group of eight people around the table, you all have your own uh, deck of cards to, to deal out. But then when you put them on the table, everybody can see them. Does that make sense? And how do I, oh, okay, now I've got it, okay. Okay, but and do we do anything with the ones on the table? You I'm don't. Sorry. I'm going to in, in a moment. I'm going to give you an activity to do, and I'm going to oh, do okay. it in, in small groups. But yeah, for a moment, I'm just letting. I you was play like, do I have to do anything yet? There's I want to play. Do I have to? Do? <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Sorry. But one thing I will, just in case you haven't worked it out, you can probably see certainly from looking at my screen. I I um I have all of you on my big screen, and I have. Uh, the Deck Hive um, session open on my laptop screen. And you can see that's a smaller screen. So to be able to see what all of you see, I have to zoom out. 
So you can either use the wheel on your mouse or you can use these buttons in the bottom right hand corner, the plus and the minus. So you often find that in a session, if you're on a different size screen to other people, you might need to move your space, move yourself around the table. So you can just click and hold and move the table around or zoom in and out to see the content that other people see. Um, and that when you do that, you're just changing your view. You're not changing anyone else's view. So don't worry, don't panic that you're starting to zoom in and out on other people's screens. You're only doing it on your own. However, if you enlarge a card, if you use the magnifying glass, um, then you are enlarging it for everybody. So you can see that there. So shall we have a, have a go at an exercise? Um, I'm going to give, this is really simple exercise, and in just a moment, I'm going to clear this table. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, but we're going to put you into breakout groups, um, maybe of threes or that, that sort of size. Um, and you can see at the bottom of the table, you've, there are table numbers, different tables. So one, two, and three we've got there. And when you go into your breakout group, what you need to do is you just need to click on the corresponding table number that is the same number as the great breakout group you end up in. OK, so if you're in breakout group two, you click on table two and then you will be in table two space and breakout group two space. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to open up the deck of cards and I just want you to scroll through and pick a question uh, that you're happy to share your answer to and you'd be interested in hearing other people's answers to. And I, when you're in your space, I just want you to pull your question over onto the table. Um, and so there will be your question and, and a couple of others on the table. And I just want you to take it in turns to share the question you chose, give your answer and invite the others in your group to answer that question too and to move around the group. Does that sound okay? So I'm going to ask you to stop um, uh, doing things on this table now. I'm going to click here and I can clear the table so that whoever's working on table one um, gets a nice clear table to work on. And then uh, we'll open up the, the breakout groups and um, put you into groups. So choose one question that you're happy to answer and you'll be interested in hearing other people's answers to, pull it over on, onto the table and we'll have 10 minutes for this activity. And just make sure you're on the same table that corresponds with your breakout group. We'll see you shortly. Now, do I need somebody else to do the breakout group? Oh, no, I can. And you can just tell me which one I can join. Okay. Do you want me to do it, Michelle? I had it open. Uh, can already. you do that? Oh, yes, you do that then. Stop I'm me just going this. to uh, move a couple of people. So I've only got uh, two groups, if that's right. That sounds good. Yeah. So tables one and two will be in use. And do you want to go to room two? Yes, I will. Thank you. Cool. See you there. Um, when it's time to swap over. OK, we totally misunderstood that game, I think. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> we had great fun. We had great fun, but we went through or we tried to go through every question with all four of us but that wasn't the intent right <laughs> you really managed to get through one question was it two questions yeah no so one yeah. question per person <laughs> okay hmm. <laughs> so well, well uh, tell us then how did you find it any reflections any questions yeah, I mean the questions are really great, and it's it's great to uh, to to have an occasion to answer them. Uh, that is a mixture of voluntary and involuntary. Uh, that that kind of pushes you to answer a question that you know will be good for you to answer, but you have a framework for it. You have a, a you know like a structure around it that makes it more likely that you will actually engage with that question and that was really great uh, but we also in our group we uh, somehow shared this feeling that it's it's almost nicer to answer a question that someone else put on the table than to answer your own mm. 
uh, because it it feels it, at least to me it felt like okay this brings us together because we're convening around a similar question yeah. rather than just everybody saying I picked this question this is my answer okay next uh, it was, I think that's why we all wanted to hear everybody's answer to everybody's question and which is why we only got through one and a half questions maybe to add to that I also have the impression that choosing a question for the group or for someone else almost feels more like a gift. So I'm showing my curiosity and interest to someone else and thereby choose a question for them. While if I'm choosing a question for myself, I have all this kind of monkey mind going on between my ears. Like, okay, do I really want to answer that? What do I say? I don't want to be mm. too safe, but also not too vulnerable. So I think it's easier to choose a question for someone else. Mm. Mm. yeah it's interesting reflection i yes um and you can imagine we often use them in in different ways so sometimes if we are trying to focus on something particular we might set up the table in advance and we might pull over a dozen cards and people can choose any one of those dozen but they can only choose from the dozen uh, and we might have them flipped over so that you're just looking at the backs of them. So then you don't quite know what question you're going to get and you turn it over and then you answer that question. We sometimes say to people exactly as, as you did, pick a question for the whole group to answer or for someone else in the group to answer. Uh, we did a conference last week where we said, choose a question to reflect on personally and then choose a question that you're going to ask the next person you meet today or somebody during your day. Um, so a whole load of different ways that you can do that. But I, I agree that sense of uh, bringing togetherness of sharing your responses to the same question, I think is, is really nice. Um, and also your point, Bastian, about um, being given, given permission. That's one of the it just generally in our work around sort of positive psychology and strengths and appreciative and appreciative focus. One of the biggest things we find is that we need to give people permission to do it. Yeah. Um, and to provide them with a rough framework that isn't too directive uh, allows for um, people to tell their stories, I suppose, and to start owning the answers they give to questions and owning their strengths if we're doing work around strengths without being too restricted. Uh, but they've they've been told they've got to do it, so they have to do it, but in, in the nicest possible way. Um, it, it provides that that structure. Yeah, uh, it's really lovely. So how was it for the other group? I think we, we are we, we also a, a bit confused in the beginning like uh, should we should we the answer like uh, the, all the question or we just answer our question so, <laughs> so yeah so what did you do I think we kind of like answer our own question but and then the, uh, we have some still have some time left and we start like maybe we can answer others questions mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and because sorry. it's my and because it's my my um, my thing, I just answer all questions, like <laughs> as if I know the answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and did any of you flip them over? Did you get? Did you realize that they were categories? That there were categories. So we didn't, be, you know, it wasn't um, important for the exercise we were doing, but uh, you, there are six different categories and eight, eight cards in each category. Um, so um, the, you can choose ones that are relevant to the, to the conversation you're having. So you will have, what you will have realized by scanning through them is there are some that might be easier to answer or less exposing, I suppose. Um, and some that you might use more in some situations than in others. So again, depending on who you're working with and what you're doing, you can give people complete freedom or, um, or narrow it down or, or encourage them to focus on certain, certain categories. Um, when, when we were testing all of these, uh, we sent we, the physical decks of cards. Uh, we sent a load of decks out to people who were our, our testers who tried them all out. And we had one response back from somebody who said, I just love them working from number one all the way through. You have them in the perfect order to, you know, go from the beginning all the way through. And I would love to tell you we did that on purpose. Uh, there, there isn't quite that amount of um, uh, detail that's that's sort of been thought through. You can do them in any any different order, although there is a logic 
uh, you know, going from self to other to wider organisation, wider, wider society and so on. Uh, but you certainly don't have to be using them in a particular order. Yeah, and it's also important, I think, just to give people the opt out if someone isn't comfortable answering a particular question, if you're choosing it for them, um, then they should have permission to say, I'd rather choose a different question. It, it is not very often that that would be an issue, but um, I think we need to be sensitive to that. It's one of the things around positive psychology generally is that uh, there is sometimes an assumption that it can't do any harm because it's focused on all the good stuff. Um, but that actually has been shown not to always be the case. Sometimes people aren't in a great place. And so actually some of these kind of questions or focusing on strengths actually just serves to reinforce to them that they really don't have any strengths. Um, and so, um, yeah, we, we always need to be mindful of that. However, in a coaching context, uh, a number of people have said to us, actually, it's quite interesting sometimes to explore which questions somebody is avoiding and why. Um, because sometimes there's something interesting there that can be worked on. So, um, but we do find... You know, both in the digital form and in the real form, um, there's something a bit more deliberate and purposeful about having a question that's on a card like that. I think if we asked each other these kind of questions just in conversation, we very quickly move on uh, and to the next to the next question and to the next part of the conversation. Um, and there's something about having chosen a card or having been given a card and having it there in front of you that means you you dwell longer on that question and go deeper with it than you might otherwise do, which is uh, a nice way to do it. And so I'm sure you can think of many different ways you could kind of structure that kind of activity to, to make it playful. I think, you know, the, the not being able to respond and only being able to listen to somebody else as they answer their question, for example, um, you know, just one, one of the ways in addition to the ones we've already talked about. So, um, um, sorry, Suzanne, you, you had a question. Yeah, yeah, I did. Do you also have, um, because it just came to my mind that there might be other questions out there that people would like to add, maybe specific to their teams, etc. Is there a kind of a blank card where you can include questions on the on the left and people can choose that or something? Uh, not yet, but it's on the list. This that's one of the examples of that. There are so many places we could go with this. Um, yeah. So there isn't the facility at the moment to add extra cards. In it, it, interestingly, for this online version, uh, there aren't blank cards for the question cards. If you bought the physical deck, you would have a couple of blank mm -hmm. cards. Mm -hmm. um, so what we would suggest if you were using this deck at the moment is online that you add them in stickies. In stickies. Um, but we will show you in the moment, in a moment, how you can create your own decks of cards on here. So if you had a whole load of questions or something that you wanted to create specifically for a particular group or for the way you work, then it is very easy to create your own decks of cards. Cool, thanks. So okay. do, you, do you want to share, should we share a couple of other decks just yeah, to let's kind of do give that. a sense of, so you get a bit more of a sense of some of the other decks that are in there? Um, we won't have time to show you all of them by any stretch, but we can show you a couple of others maybe. Yeah, uh, and so. the best thing maybe is to then, you know, after the session, if, you, if you're if you interested in seeing more is to go and create an account and then you can start having a play uh, with some of the different decks yourselves and, and exploring it. So you can see, hopefully you can see my screen again and you can um, see those decks at the, at the top. I briefly showed you the Art of the Possible uh, cards before. We've got uh, the Nature of Emotions cards here are all have got um, different emotions on them. Um, and some beautiful images or nature images. Um, so you can see there's a variety there. These can be really great cards to use for check-ins at the start of sessions or partway through or at the end, just to see where everyone's at. Um, particularly useful when we're all working remotely and maybe harder to get a sense of the mood in the room. Uh, we're not all physically together. So um, those are the emotions cards. We've also got in here uh, some other lovely um, image cards. These are all images here. Uh, you can see different ones for different conversations. Use, use however you like. Uh, so one thing I should say is that we are currently running a series of webinars and it made me think about this because we're about to do uh, the one with Charlotte next week who created this deck of cards. Um, we're doing a series of free webinars. So if you look at Deck Hive and you see a deck of cards you're particularly interested in, um, then the likelihood is with either, we've either already done a webinar, which will then be on our YouTube channel, or we're going to do one where we'll be interviewing the creator 
to talk about um, how they created them, why they created them and how they use them. Um, so that might be useful to you if you're interested in that. Um, and, and sorry, Michelle, the background yeah. with the draft session, is that kind of every time it looks it looks kind of like a work in progress? Is that something that you would need to kind of design or is that? So, yeah, so the way this works, um, you saw the session that you were in that we went off and, and did the group work in didn't look like this. Yeah. And that's because that's an activated session. Um, so you can see here, I've just opened up a, a session here with our, our strengths cards, which we've been talking to you about. And you can see these have got words and images on them. So the draft sessions allow you as the facilitator to go in and set up sessions in advance, uh, get yourself organized, you know, um, sort things out on, on your tables or whatever else, add, the, add tables in, rename them, whatever you need to do, you can do that in advance um, without using up your monthly session limit. So if you're on a free plan or the starter plan, then you're allowed to use up to, to run up to five sessions a month where you invite people into the session like I've just done. The other plan is unlimited, so you have as many as you like. But what we didn't want was for people to be in a position where they were using up their sessions, their monthly sessions, just in their planning activity. So you can come in and plan and you just, you know, it's just a draft session. You just save it and then it will appear in your dashboard as a saved session. Um, but once it's saved, uh, nothing will change then. It just stays, stays as it is. But once it's saved, it then allows you to activate it. And by activating it, you can then invite people into the session. There you go. Oh, and, and then it looks, all gone. Oh, okay. yeah. and, and then I you... get all these controls. And sorry, can you add a brand background, kind of a branded background? Not at the moment, but again, okay. that's on, it's the, on list. the list. OK, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. But these are all the things we want to hear because this is, you know, all the things that we uh, want. Um, we want to know what how people would use them, what, what they'd want. Some of the other things that are on the list are things like the ability to draw a random card mm. um, and maybe even to be able to deal and things like that, to put all of the cards out on the deck. Because obviously, if I wanted to show all of them over here on the table at the moment, I'm pulling them over one by one mm -hmm. and it would be nice to be able to say click and uh, yeah. you draw mm. them all over. Cool. So some of those kinds of things as well. Maybe a timer? A timer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, also also useful. And and the uh, blank cards, like we said, um, and also the ability to have more than one deck in a session at once. So at the moment, uh, you start the sessions through the decks. So um, you choose your deck, uh, like here, and then I go in and I start a new session from here. So your deck is chosen. But of course, there are instances where I might want um, this deck in there, but I might want the good question cards in there as well. So I can do a couple of exercises with the Art of the Possible cards, and then I could do a couple of exercises um, with the, the good question cards. Uh, so again, that's that's high up the list as well. Um, and is there a timeline yeah. as to when the list is going to be ticked off? <laughs> no uh, pressure, we, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're ticking it off all the time. We've um, Some of those, so uh, what we focused on for the last month or so, largely, to be honest, have been features that would be behind the scenes. You know, it's been um, making the subscription system work, um, just ironing out some of the bugs, some of those kinds of things. Mm. So we've now higher up the list now are some of the things to improve functionality and to add a few things in so i would hope within the next month or two okay. um as long as our developer isn't listening to this call and uh, knows that i'm not holding him to it um but yes we, we're hoping to make some of those changes fairly soon mm. but yeah. do keep letting us know you know if, if there are things that you find uh, frustrating or that, that you really would love it to be able to do then just keep telling us because the more we hear you know that will help us to prioritize um the things that people will find most helpful Mm, definitely. Um, so is it helpful to quickly show you how you create a deck as well? Are people interested in that? Yeah, I do um, have one quick question. Um, yeah, yeah. What's your experience with IT departments of larger corporations mm. being very uh, careful about what kind of websites there people can mm. open? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, sometimes really it does. It, it has caused, <laughs> caused a few issues, but not many. Um, so, so normally it's sensible to just ask them to to do a test session before you're doing something important, um, and then uh, and to whitelist the site. Um, so, you, usually, our experience is that can be done pretty quickly when it 
when it's a problem. But in most cases, uh, they are able to access it without a problem. Uh, you, you do sometimes get um, individual issues with um, local machines with firewalls and things which seem to block it. And sometimes we just can't figure out what it is that caused a problem. Uh, and I understand that's an issue for any of these kind of sites like the whiteboard sites. Um, to some extent, you know, that that is something that comes with the territory, unfortunately. So uh, some of the changes we made recently have made it easier to get into sessions than it used to be. So your experience of getting in now hopefully was very smooth. Um, uh, and so you know, it is improving. We're monitoring it. But um, yeah, generally, organizations have been pretty good, actually better than we might have expected. Mm. Yeah. Um, something else I was going to say about that. It will come back to me. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely worth definitely worth doing the check in advance. I, I, what I was going to say is the, the biggest technical issue we have, actually, is people not understanding how it works in the sense that this doesn't open within Zoom. So people are expecting it to open within uh, the software that you're using for your conversation. So within Zoom or within Teams. And so explaining to people that this is going to open uh, as a separate tab uh, and you might have to toggle between, uh, but I'm sure all of you have been facilitating over the last year online have, have come across that. Um, so that's, that's probably been our most frequent technical issue. If you talk to other video conferencing providers such as Butter or InSpace, because um, I have the impression that uh, the non-Zoom providers are very good with integrating other tools and for instance, mirror boards or um, Google Sheets. Mm. Yeah, we've had a conversation with Toasty. Um, yeah. and so it, and it, we haven't gone back to that yet to, to look at doing it. It's not sort of near the top of the list, but that's something that, that certainly they're open to integrating with DeckHive. So um, that's the first possibility. The other ones, no, not yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's, you're right, it would it, it could help. Um, my concern about it, I think may, maybe a limitation with it would be that it, if somebody is already paying for Teams or for um, Zoom, that then if they have to then pay for another video service on top of that. You know, Butter, in for order... instance, is free. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, Butter is very similar to Toasty from the technicalities. I have the impression I have uh, one more users by now, but I might be wrong. OK, no, thank Butter. you. Butter.us. I will have a look. Fab, thank you. Uh, because, of course, that would make it easier if people are just using one. Yeah one system yeah um i'm just seeing the couple of comments from people in the chat as well different language versions yes definitely suzanne we've we're um martin's been on the case getting the strengths cards translated first of all uh because those are out so we're we're here today talking to you about deck hive but we're also the creators of the at my best product so the question cards and the strengths cards uh we can take ownership of translating those into other languages and so we're uh, we're starting to do that um and hopefully Again, in the next few weeks, you'll start seeing some of those. Um, the Yes, uh, Miriam, the, the issue around confidential information. One of the things that we do always make, make people aware of when they're in a session, uh, when you have um, a session open and you've got the tables, the table numbers along the bottom, then anybody can click between those tables. Uh, so I might be in, a, in small group one and using table one, but I can click into small group three's table to look and see what's there. So just being mindful of that. We don't typically find that people are putting particularly sensitive information on the tables. It's the conversation uh, that is where it, the details being had. Uh, but it is why we do encourage we have um, uh, corporate. Uh, packages to encourage people to make sure that everybody has their own individual account so if you're a facilitator or coach you're saving all your own sessions so only you have access to that um, and things can then get locked so that makes those things less of an issue um, in terms of creating your own deck so it's very easy to do that so hopefully you can see can you see that on my screen um, so just click in here i can uh, name my deck here Sorry, helps when I um, follow it through. Um, and you can see then that uh, I'm presented with uh, an example card deck here, um, and I can change that. So I can change the size of that. I can change um, the orientation of that to something that's standard. But I could also, if I wanted to, I could um, do a bespoke uh, sizing of that. 
Um, and I can also make the cards two sided. So we do encourage people to do that because then you get the flipping. It makes it feel more like a card um, and I can just add cards and, and so on. So I can have as many as I like. Uh, and then if I want to add text, I just click on it and, and type in. Um, and I can do that all the way down. So on and I can change the size of that, etc. Uh, and then I can upload images. So if you've got photographs or a set of images that you often use, then you could just as long as, long as you've got permission to do that. So we ask everybody to uh, essentially tick to say that they've got permission um, to do to, to upload whatever they're uploading, that you have the copyright rights to it. Uh, but then you can upload your images. You can also have a common background on everything or you can have something on different on each one. Um, you can change the color, border thickness, font size, all of those kinds of things as well. Um, and you can put in a cover uh, so that when it appears on your dashboard, you've got the, the image so you can have a different cover for each of your decks of cards that you create. And also that within um, a session, you, you, you can see the, the cover image on that to make it look a little bit more professional, use your own branding and, and so on. The other useful thing, if you're creating your own deck is you can actually create sub decks. Um, and what that means is that you could, for example, create a deck of images and then a deck of words uh, and then a deck of numbers or whatever. And then on your screen, when you, you open it up, you would essentially have what looks like three separate decks. Does that make sense? Um, so you can do that within here as well, just by uh, adding another deck and then it, it, it creates it as a separate uh, sub deck. So you have the separate piles or the separate trays for each of the decks that you're using. And then once you've created it, you can immediately start a new session with it. So you can have a play, you can then come back in and edit that. You have the rights to edit that. So if six months down the line, you want to add in more questions, more images, whatever else, then you can easily come back in and edit your deck as you go. So designed very much for you as the facilitator to create the deck to then use in your sessions rather than as something to use in a session and create a deck collectively with those people that you're facilitating, uh, if that makes sense. The latter might come at some stage. We have ha had a few people ask for that, but that would be quite a long way down the list for now. So Henry, anything else you'd say about that, Martin? Don't think so. Has so anyone got any questions about? Um, or maybe just to, um, if you didn't mention the, the fact that you can have a consistent back. So, like mm. you, you see that uh, the question cards had a few different categories. But if we had maybe like just a deck of, uh, of photo cards, and then we wanted to have a reverse of that, then as an obvious thing to do would be to put your logo on the back of that, um, and and then um, you have a you, you can upload that on the left hand side. There was a place where you could load one image that will then automatically appear on the on that side of every card so you don't have to upload that image to every card separately so it actually doesn't take very long at all to create a deck uh, so if you know what the content is that's pretty quick to do and if you've already had something designed in card format then uh, all you need to do is have a, a jpeg or png for each card or each side of each card as a separate file and then you just click on the photo icon on each card and you can put the image of that that on there so anything that's more designed um even if it's got text on it it's generally better to upload an image than to try to uh it's quite limited what you can do with the the, the sort of native um editing within here so most of the cards we create are as images and then uploaded as images if that makes sense but we'd love to know yeah kind of what your thoughts are about how you know, as, as experienced facilitators, what would you want to do with this? And and what would your, you know, where, where is your creativity going about what you think the possibilities might be for a system like this? So we'd love to hear that. Um, but while we're doing that, um, and just while you're thinking about what you might share, I am just going to share my screen again, just very quickly, because what we do have, we don't want you to miss out on, is a code, uh, which we have um, here. So workshops work. And if so, so, I think we mentioned earlier, we have a free account, which allows you to use the starter decks. And so if you wanted to have a play, then that's a good place to start to go on to, um, to the site and, and create your account and have a play. Uh, but if you wanted to have access to the, the whole library of decks and you wanted to do more sessions than five sessions in a month, then uh, if you were to sign up for either our starter plan or the unlimited plan, and use this code um, at the point where you're choosing your plan, then you will get a free month. 
Um, so you can cancel at any point. So you can just take the free month and play with it and then, you know, um, uh, and bail after that if you wish to. Um, we obviously hope you won't, um, but that you, you, it's fine if you do. Um, so yeah, just you make a note of that code so you don't miss out on that uh, that free month when you get to that point where that's helpful for you to do. So um, yeah, so any any questions or thought? <laughs> that's a nice prop. Um, yeah, any questions or or ideas that um, that you've got kind of mulling around in your brain at the moment? I think it would indeed be nice to just uh, have a go round with ideas that pop up how, of use cases. Um, and I can start something when I was just looking at the, um, at the decks you can create yourself and um, with the idea that you can, or when you said that, make sure that you do have the rights to actually use the pictures. I thought it could actually be an interesting team building thing to upload the images of the team members mm -hmm. um, and then have questions like some superpowers to delegate or the team member of the year or month in a certain category um, and to play mm. with that. Mm. And I passed the creativity ball to Suzanne which comes just at the right time because I just was about to write into the chat that I have to leave because I have a call at 15. So um, I can, I was just thinking about kind of um, when you said kind of the, the pictures of the team to really also have maybe specific um, feedback questions or something for them. So kind of, or kind of a task they need to do. Maybe it's also around a play. So kind of within the next two weeks, um, so you kind of have a picture of each and then maybe have within the next two weeks, go to another person and tell them, I trust you because, or <laughs> whatever, um, you, yeah, kind of as a prompt. So maybe um, more have it as a, as an activity card. Yeah. That was my, and sorry, yeah, I have to leave. So, um, but very, very insightful. Do you nominate? Thank you so much for the session. Do you nominate? Oh yeah, I nominate, I nominate Christiana to go next. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, bye -bye. Suzanne. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you, Susanna. So I'm not a facilitator. I just take courses to uh, facilitating at uh, Miriam's uh, sessions. So, but I like the, um, the, the cards, I, li I like this um, concept very much because um, you can select, even if you select the questions or if you, if you design them for, your, for, the, for the client that you use it. So it's, it's not something that is uh, prefabricated. Uh, the customer sees that it's uh, done on purpose for them. Mm. And I think mm. this, is very, this is very nice. Mm. This is very nice. Mm. And yeah, I yeah. would, uh, I would have a question. Um, uh, me, me as as a user, would I have also the opportunity to have a Joker card? Let's say if I do not want to answer a question, can I put the Joker out and mm. say no? I pass mm -hmm. it on. That's a nice <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. So not not yet, but yeah, it's maybe that's mm. that could be something we would add for certain decks of cards and certain activities that could be really useful, couldn't it? Yeah. Mm, thank you. Okay. So, so you're I'm, gonna. Who are you pass the baton to? to Manal. Thank you, Christiane. Sure. Um, thank you, Christiane. Um, this has already been said before, but just experiencing it for myself. Uh, when we went before we went into our breakout booths, we were given prompts about which card, pick a card that you want to answer. And I found that um, I, I picked a card and I answered it. And um, however, uh, it was very structured and it kind of had like a wall. Whereas the, the card that wasn't selected for me, I, I felt like I was able to connect more with my fellow breakout team members just because um, I didn't plan it. I didn't plan my answer so I could be more vulnerable and the answer just sort of flowed. Um, so I really love that. So when we came back into plenary and Miriam mentioned that uh, briefly, I thought, wow, that was my experience exactly, right? And so mm -hmm. um, moving forward with these exercises for my facilitated sessions, I don't think that I would give the prompt of, you know, pick a card that you want to answer. I think I, um, I mean, there's a certain level of security that's attached to that, but do I want that level of security in order to deepen those connections and create those vulnerable moments? So mm. that was an insight that, that I got, um, but amazing, amazing activity. Um, and I pick, 
uh, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I'm in uh, a lot of sessions at the moment where you hear a lot of the teams sort of saying that, uh, that obviously they're struggling to, to connect and, and they're still sort of like, you know, work, working virtually and, and not so much in a business, but it is sort of like just, just chatting. And I think, and, and it's actually following on sort of like from what Miriam sort of like started off. I'm thinking of all the different sort of like images that you could, could load up. Cause you, you know, you've, you've had the thing, you know, like the baby wall where everybody brings in a photograph of them as a child and then you vote on who you think is, is what, or, or you could have a baking sort of session. Everybody sort of then takes a photograph of the cake they bake and then you have to sort of like try and work out who, who you know, who's the baker and because who's this magnificent and the, and the voting, but then the back of the card, you then reveal sort of like who, who it belongs to. Mm. So mm. Thing. Nice. You know, I can yeah. see it being used, something like that as a, yeah, a fun, fun sort of system. So yeah, um, mm. and uh, yeah, Peggy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. I think uh, I like the exercise today, and also it's, it's I think it's very helpful that because the last question already list in the cards, and sometimes for for us it's very difficult to ask someone question. So I think it's very helpful, and also it's I think it's kind of like release that people that kind of power to ask questions because sometimes people come from your mouth. But if it's list in the car, it's somehow it's become easier. But but I'm not sure like is it when we such as a, when we pick the car, like maybe this question is easy for me to answer, but probably it's not easy to answer for someone else. So I'm not sure is that is it possible we can have the kind of the the different like uh, how how to answer questions like different label of cars like we can like maybe let people know oh, this this kind of question probably a bit difficult to answer or some questions easier to answer like uh, we have mm. green or yellow or red. I'm not sure. <laughs> we help you make yeah. choices and depending on the situation. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. yeah. yeah. And that, that's why sometimes we would, um, as Michelle said earlier, sometimes we would choose a selection, a subset of the cards to put out on the mm -hmm. table and then ask people to just choose one of the ones on the table. So ah. in certain situations, you know, we would choose the ones that are likely to be easier to answer. Uh, and that can work. That can work quite well because you yeah. don't need a huge number. We've got 48 in that deck we use ah. today. You in a you know short 10, 15 minute activity, you probably don't need that many questions, do you? You mm. just need mm. 10. You know, that's yeah. enough to find to have some choices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fab, thank you. Yeah, and possible to Bastion. Yeah, thank you. Um I've been thinking about what I'm thinking, and I tend to think slowly, so I don't know yet what I'm thinking. Uh <laughs> Or if I have some, you know, great ideas coming up, I think I need to think more. Uh, but I had this one reflection earlier about some of the authority of the written word, and uh, and even beyond the the written word that you write on a flip chart or that you write with your hand on a, a card, but something that's been designed and produced and you put that on the table, there's a degree of legitimacy or a degree of authority that, you know, humans are weird, but it, <laughs> in a beautiful way, uh, in that when there is a, a really meaningful, personal, uh, encouraging, kind, tender question, because it's been written and it's been printed, there is a degree of, okay, I get to answer it because you know, it's been made, you know, there's mm. a process behind this, that it's been created by people who invested the time and energy to create it. So they must be experts, right? So there is this legitimacy that comes with this. Mm. And this is something that I think as, as facilitators makes sense to, to leverage sometimes to have this permission to have this, uh, this 
um, credibility around uh, this opening of this door to say like, no, 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 you, you get to say what you're proud of uh because uh it's it's not inappropriate it's on a card mm. here you see and then there's yeah uh, you're safe uh with disclosing this because there is a, a space around this with legitimacy and mm. and i'm just wondering how to because you can abuse it right uh, very easily uh this legitimacy and this authority so it's important also to reflect on the power that comes with it but i'm also wondering in terms of things like strategy building or um or developing a mission or um or, or things like this how we can use this authority you know like the the force uh for not the dark side but the bright side you know like how can you allow thinking towards an area of sustainability or how can you allow for an uh, thinking in an area of equity or of inclusion or of uh, non-monetary profitability um, that would steer a conversation around the future for example with questions that provide legitimacy or an allowance or a permission to not only think about markets and numbers and you know like measurable monetary impact but also mm. the other things and that could be a, a nice way to use that mm. that jedi thought that is a you know a printed question that has a logo and a stamp on it mm. <laughs> yeah yeah i think yeah there yeah, some good thoughts so if that's the slow thinking, then, you know, we better watch out when you start kind of warming up. <laughs> but sometimes I need to talk in order to know what I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I, mean, I think we can relate to kind of those things you're saying there. We found that, you know, over the years, um, using the strengths cards as well, not just the question cards, but the strengths cards themselves, you know, have that kind of power to, because people don't like to talk about what they're great at. Yeah. Um, but when you put them in a situation where, you know, you have to choose something then they, they start to become more comfortable because they say well if i have to choose something then maybe possibly this one sometimes yeah. and then you and then you started then you've got the, the foot in the door that kind of opens up the conversation and then the, the energy starts to come and it, and it flows from there but um yes anything that's going to help you to kind of steer people in the right direction because of that tendency to naturally just start to say well yeah maybe this is a strength but I'm really terrible at this and, and, I, and I'm awful at that. And, you know, it just helps to steer you back onto the kind of, no, the thing we want to talk about is in this direction. Um, so, yeah, it's a yeah. simple thing, isn't it? But it's, it's true. It's, it's powerful and the credibility that comes from a tool like this. Uh, I think even, you know, the, the, the ability to create your own like that, you know, I, I think it's, it's interesting in this kind of environment now, you're know, creating a deck of cards for us in years gone by was always a, big deal because you know you go through a process and you want to check it with everybody before you press print you know and spend thousands of pounds on getting them all printed uh, well now you know you saw how quickly michelle did that you know we could be doing something five minutes before we're having the session with you um, and stick our logo on the back and then use it and how how much less credibility does that have than the thing that took thousands of pounds and months to create and probably not much less actually and so the ability for you to create something bespoke for the client's situation you're in, I think that's a really interesting thing to play with over the next you know, months. We can see how well that works. You know, do we get many of those benefits in that same way, but much, much quicker? Um, just, I was just thinking, and I wanted to drop the idea here, building on what um, Bastian and you said about the strengths um, and how difficult it is to talk about our own strengths. I think what really adds energy to a group and changes the entire dynamic is to point out strengths in others, um, a kind of warm shower exercise, um, where then it would be a nice combination with the, uh, with the pictures of the teammates. If you had to choose one strength for each and explain where, in which situation you see these strengths. Because I think one thing we do not often enough in corporate and team contexts is to appreciate each other um, and to see their superpowers that they might not be aware of. Mm. Yeah, we use that exercise uh, very regularly. It's one of one of my favorites to, to do that. And in fact, within um, the strengths cards on Deckhive, there are a list of resources 
and some videos and things and you'll find that ex exercise in there called quick fire feedback as a way of basically putting the spotlight on each person in the group um, in turn and say okay we're going to talk about Jenny now everybody go through the cards pick one word that is a strength you value in Jenny everyone pulls their word on, onto the table and we spend five minutes with everyone saying which word they chose and why and like you say just uh, I like that uh, warm shower um, analogy that, that each person then gets a lot of feedback very quickly and then you can expand that to start thinking about teams so everybody choose an image that for them represents this team at its best and pull that over onto the table everyone tell the story about why they chose that image now how did that collect connect to all of the individual stuff that we were talking about earlier um, and the you know individual strengths so yeah here's, here's, uh, here's one we did earlier for a conference last week um, so yes, they, they can be used really nicely for that. And again, I mean, we use this exercise a lot um, in face-to-face -face training, but it's been really valuable whilst we've all been working remotely when people are, the, the feedback we're getting from our corporate clients is one of the biggest issues right now is teams not feeling connected. And this is a good way to start those personal connections in quite a, quite a gentle, I, I say quite a gentle way, slightly with hesitancy because People are still quite um, nervous to start with when you get into this exercise. So it does have to be positioned uh, and built up to. It, it always works, um, but people have to feel confident um, because it's still receiving feedback. And our natural inclination to receiving feedback is to be a bit, oh, what's going to come, isn't it? Um, so, yes, but it does work very well. Yeah. I'm very conscious of the time. It's 25 yes. past two, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and I, um, maybe we can close with a quick checkout with everyone just sharing one thing that they found most valuable today. Someone starts and passes the talking stick. Oh, well, I'll go first because I always find it valuable in these sessions to hear um, hear your feedback and, and watch other people's experiences of using Deck Hive. We're really grateful um, to people like you for sharing your experiences and your thoughts about where we can go next because that's that's how we are learning. So thank you. And I will pass to Peggy. Sorry, I just lost my connection. <laughs> 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 it's it's just because there are two people in the using the the conference. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So are we so checking it's just learn, oh, it's uh, yeah, check out what was okay. the most valuable for you today? <laughs> I see. I mean, it, it it's a nice exercise, and I mean, it's always good to know more tools, and it's. I think it's kind of helpful when we want to design a workshop and it's also easier. And I would say it's kind of like database for facilitators. So you can also look for some more ideas from the, from the deck. Yeah. And I will pass over to Jenny. Thank you. Uh, yes, I really like the, the tool, and I think it would be great for, uh, for yeah, working with with teams and uh, and bringing them together. I definitely like the idea of the uh, yeah, of the, the doing sort of like the cake that they've put on a card. I think yeah, it's a good fun tool. Uh, Manara. Uh, thanks, Jenny. Uh, so I've never played with cards, so just um, kind of going on with what Bastion sort of mentioned, human beings are weird. Like I've always asked these questions, but there's something just real about like having cards there. So I, I just find the element of playfulness and uh, especially like uh, the, the questions that were on those desk, decks, I definitely think it's something that I will incorporate into a lot of my sessions. So thank you so much for that and for demonstrating how effective cards can be in developing those connections. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And I pass it over to Maria. Thank you. I, yeah, it was nice to experience. Like, I haven't used cards since the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> I haven't been in a session using cards. And it was uh, indeed, as Mana said, it's just a nice dynamic, this playfulness and slight confusion being in a breakout session. Then, okay, we choose cards and now what we do with it. 
it just um it's a new energy so i thought it was nice thank you and i pass it on to christiana Thank, thank you, Miriam. I liked um, this, this session because you, you explained what we could do and we could practice it. And it showed how flexible it can be. And um, it's really a great, uh, a great, great exercise. And I like this, let's say for, uh, I do not very much like the sticky notes because it's just too messy sometimes. And here it's a little bit more structured and you can guide a discussion uh, through this a little bit structured um, questions if you have specific topics that you would like to address. So I pass it on to Bastian. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I like participating and stuff. It's, uh, it's very joyful to lean back and be in it and, and do something and connect with people. It's a very nice break of the day. Um, and just, yeah, thank you for that. And, um, and I, I'm kind of hoping that I get to use these in face-to-face -face activities because I miss people uh, and sharing a space with them. But uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it really got me thinking about all kinds of different other things on how to work with, uh, you know, material objects, uh, be they cards or, or other things that are tactile and three-dimensional and mm -hmm. you know, like you can touch them and feel them and look at them and move them and it's a body experience and I think um, while we met virtually it made me even more hungry for uh, non-virtual uh, three-dimensional uh, events. Uh, thank you and, and I have to say I love the picture behind you with all the hearts on. Ah, oh, that one. Yeah, uh, my 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 youngest daughter made it for me. It's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. So that's everybody else, isn't it? I think so. Fab. So well, and from me, um, yeah. Thank you for the engagement. It's nice to see so so many smiley faces and engaged people in a session like this. So I you know, really appreciate the chance to be, for us to spend some time with you guys and. Um, Thank you for your input and your questions. And if you have any more questions afterwards, then uh, we're easy to find. So you can just go to deckhive.com um, and you can email us at uh, hello at deckhive.com. And you'll find us both on LinkedIn. So uh, feel free to connect with us there if you'd like to. And just a reminder that uh, if you want to make a note of the, the coupon code, uh, workshops work. That's the one that will give you a free month when you sign up for one of our monthly plans. So make the most of that. And uh, thank you, Miriam.